So one of the advantages of videotaping your hunts is that you make believers out of people who otherwise wouldn't believe you. I'll even just go just a video and not take a bow with me sometimes. It uh, becomes addictive. This is a location on a farm my daughter and I obtained permission to hunt after cutting five or six cords of firewood. For the landowner they said go ahead and hunt. And that afternoon I had a nice young buck walk by on a tractor road heading downhill. That prairie grass behind him is a pretty good bedding area. And uh, so I decided this would be a good spot for my daughter and I to come in and try to get her her first deer. So we dug a hole in that afternoon. We were running a little bit late. I gave her a quick pet talk, reminder of what to do and what not to do. This is her second year of bow hunting. So this would be her first year with the bow if it came to fruition. Uphill on her right side is a bush. You can see between her and me, and that's going to help hide deer coming from the uphill side. We approached from the downhill side because of the wind direction that day. We walked along the ditch line there at the top of your screen. That's a ditch line. And this buck cut our track. And he approached from the downhill side. We use scent spray on our boots and pant legs. That helps a little bit. Uh, deferring how long the deer thinks we were through that area. He knows a human has been through there. Two people make twice the smell as one. And he knows something's up. And when a deer encounters something unusual, out of the ordinary, they're going to want to find the answer. And so he's going to spend some time here figuring things out. My daughter is about 25, maybe 30 feet away from that deer, less than 10 yards for sure. And I'm about the same distance away from her, so that buck's within 20 yards of me. And when a, a deer, especially a mature deer, this is probably a three and a half year old buck, is uncertain about what something is or what's going on, they'll just stand still, survey their environment, let their nose do their work, their ears and their eyes, and eventually they'll figure it out. It's a beautiful afternoon. Um, if we had just walked up the tractor road instead of cutting through this grass, this buck would have walked by at 15 yards and, and given us a chip shot. And that's part of hunting. You learn every time you go. Uh, but it's a very exciting way to hunt, being on the ground within feet of animals like this. My daughter knows that she has to hold still, be rock still, or this buck is going to pick up on the slightest movement. And that support rod on her bow is what enables her to keep her bow upright, ready to shoot. That's our knock splitter. If you're a compound shooter, you can want to check that out. Recurve and longbow guys who are shooting a, a bow that weighs a pound, a pound and a half, don't have the same problem that compound people do. And that's an advantage of using traditional equipment. It's a beautiful little buck. He's going to look past Claire because she's three feet tall. That's not a human being to a deer. I'm standing up next to that tree here, videoing it. And he's going to watch me zoom the camera out, and the pieces are going to come together for him. And he says, that person is five to six feet tall. I am out of here. So we don't catch up with this buck on this day, but we had a great time hunting together. I think it's experience that she's going to remember for a long time to come. When you're mentoring a young or a new hunter, the most rewarding experience is for them to have some success of their own. And later that fall, during gun season, she took a shovel and took her boyfriend out for a hunt dug in a couple holes and ran into a nice two and a half year old buck. It's your first buck ever with a bow or a gun. Congratulations. Yay! I think she's hooked.